It is Friday. It's December 16th, and this is Love Notes, Daily Devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. Yesterday, we heard the Beatitudes, the beginning of the teaching of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, or the Instruction on the Mount, and it's teaching that was given to a rather motley group of individuals. First, there's the disciples who have left behind everything, including their vocations and families, and followed Jesus, and who are now seeking what it is they're supposed to do with their lives. And then there are the crowds, the huge crowds who've gathered because Jesus is healing all of their illness. So if you think about that group, you have some folks who, well, might not be the most successful folks in the world. The folks have come out primarily in the first place, because they sought healing. They were broken. They were seeking relief in a world where there was none. They were seeking for someone to help them. They are, in fact, the mourning, the meek, the peacemaking, those who hunger for justice and righteousness, those who hunger for the kingdom of God. They're all people who are seeking. And so they gather this motley crew before Jesus. And once he's told them what it is that they are, blessed and hopeful, he now turns to them and tells them what they're to do with that. We live in a secular culture, by which I mean that the church, the holiness of life, is less and less important all the time. A secular culture looks at the church today and says, what good is the church? We don't really need the church for anything. More and more, we don't even need the church to marry us. We can get a certificate online. Uh, we don't need the church to baptize us because we don't believe in that stuff anymore. We don't need the church to bury us. We'll just have a celebration of life at our local restaurant. The question, what good is the church, is what Jesus answers. Now, sometimes in an effort to be important in the world, to be seen as successful, to have a, a reason for being, uh, the church takes a couple of different tacks. Sometimes it's said that, well, if we can get our Christian people in public office, if we can elect them to leadership, then they will change the whole culture to be like us Christians. The other tack is to build the church up so that it's big and noticeable, just like the big box stores, just like the malls, which are actually now dying, just like the American consumer network that we're all part of, churches can try to build themselves up to be mega churches. Important because, well, everybody goes there. Uh, Oddly enough, Jesus doesn't use either of those two images to kind of look at what it is the church should be. Jesus turns to this motley group of people who are not the best and the brightest, so to speak, but they're the ones who hurt the most, who are broken the most. And he says, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. First off, notice how salt is what the church is. The people of God are. This motley group of people are. They are little things, salt, in a big earth. When you put salt in a recipe, you don't need much for the whole thing to be flavored by the salt. It's not the size of the teaspoon of salt, but it's the effect of the salt that's what we're after. Jesus says, if the salt has lost its taste, now, if you're a chemist and you're wondering to yourself, how's that possible? It's not chemically possible. Salt is always salt. But Jesus is not teaching chemistry here. He's talking about the usefulness of salt. If salt, for some reason, did lose its taste, well, then it'd be just sand, wouldn't it? And you'd throw it out and walk on it. It wouldn't be good for anything. And so when the church has lost its ability to flavor the world, to influence the world, to work from a position of being little on the whole big, well, 
then it's not the church anymore. Jesus turns to a second image. He says, if you are, you are the light of the world to the church. A light, a little thing, in the midst of a very dark world, a very big thing. He says a city built on a hill cannot be hid. One city in the midst of a dark world can't be hid. You see it because the lights are on at night. If you have a lamp, you wouldn't be foolish enough to put it under a bushel basket. First off, it wouldn't give off any light. Second off, the basket's going to catch on fire. <laughs> you put it on the lampstand where everybody can see it, and it shines in all the house. That's the church. Again, a small thing having a large effect on the rest of the world. In the same way, he says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus is asking us questions today, and he's pointing us to something that we celebrate in baptism. First, he's asking us, why would you keep your faith hidden? Why would you keep the longing that you have for the kingdom of God hidden? Why would you keep your mourning hidden? Why would you keep your need for prayer hidden? Why would you keep your desire for forgiveness hidden? These are all the things that, like salt and light, can infect the world and change it because people see what it does for the good of all. The church may be outnumbered and overpowered, but who is it that makes us salty? Who is it that makes us shine? If the salt loses its flavor, can it be restored? Well, God can make that happen. So the question here is how the people of God will take their blessedness, which they've already been told they have, and their hope for what is to come, and infect the world with it, to change everyone they meet in some small way to become more the kingdom of God. We do what the world won't. That's the bottom line here. We love what the world won't love. That's the bottom line here. We give grace to people who we know the world doesn't think deserve it. We forgive those who shouldn't be forgiven. That's what it means to be the salt and the light of the world, to take the message of Jesus into ourselves and to live as if the kingdom of God has come today and so we live it in its fullness, full of grace and mercy, love, forgiveness, peace. Even though we know it's not fully here yet, we work as if it is. And that way, the smallness of the church, the smallness of the people of God, the motliness of the group that's gathered can change the world. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly God, your people have been called not to be large, not to be successful, not to be noticeable. But in fact, we've been called to be the blessed people of God who long for the kingdom of God to come. We've been called to be salt, to flavor the stew that we live in. We've been called to be light, a little pinprick of light in the midst of a darkness that cannot overwhelm your light. Help us, Lord. Restore our saltiness. Help us to love and to give grace when the world will not, so that the world may be changed to your will. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.